Hey, I'm Zoe and welcome back to my channel, Zoe's All Booked. If you're new here, welcome to the shit show and welcome to day four of Couchmas. It is day four, right? Today I'm going to be doing my November wrap up and I had really big plans for November. If you saw my TBR, you know I was trying to get through 5,000 pages of fantasy books and uh, it went, it went okay. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll address that. In total, I read and or listen to 19 books, which was more than I was expecting. So I'm actually really proud of that. So let's just get into this. I'm going to go through the physical books I have here, and then I will go into the uh, ebooks and audiobooks that I got through. Uh, starting with A Lie, because I have the physical book here for The Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory, but I actually listened to the audiobook for this one. So I'm lying just right off the bat. This one was super cute. I liked it a lot. Um, I wasn't expecting the characters to be older because the rest of the characters in the other books in the series are all I think like late 20s early 30s but these were in their late 50s early 60s I want to say I could be lying but it was cute I really really liked this one um it follows one of the characters and her mom going to England for the holidays and her mom finding love there was it my favorite out of the series so far I think I don't know, I like the wedding date and the proposal better, I think, but I did like this one, I did enjoy it. Draco, what the hell are you yelling about, bud? I got your food down here, I got me down here, I got your water down here, leave your brother alone. Then I read The Law of Attraction by Laura Carter. Um, this one is a Manhattan attorney and a patisserie chef. She is from England. This was okay. It took me a long time to get into the writing style. It just, it definitely wasn't for me. It was first person present tense, which I always find a hard time getting into, but just like the, the writing style itself, I think added to that. I was annoyed reading the book, not because of the book itself, like the contents of the book. It was literally the book itself. It's a very stiff paperback. And uh, I just learned that these are called the gutters of the book, um, where like the white space in between where the, uh, in between the pages where the text is, I forgot all the words. Do you see how close the words are to like the edge of the page? So I was reading this and having a, I had to break the spine to read the book. And it, like, I normally don't mind like a broken spine. Most of my books have broken spines because I've read them so many fucking times. But this one, because I had to, not just because I was, so invested who's messaging me memories of of draco pictures okay well how appropriate so like i was actually so annoyed reading the book and it took away from my overall enjoyment is that petty of me probably do i care absolutely the fuck not because who who designed this maybe let's redo it maybe let's rethink that one the book itself was okay nothing special probably one i won't ever well, I'll probably reread it again because I reread re most of my books because um, I have a sickness. But yeah, overall, it, it was it was decent. It was a cute romance. It wasn't spicy. So if you're into that, it was definitely a uh, closed door. The whole thing. Grumpy sunshine. Yeah, I've just I feel like I've just read better stories with the same kind of dynamic, um, same like tropes, whatever. I've, I've read better ones, but it was it was decent. Then what do we have? What's closest? Ah! I read, I listened to these actually. Again, see, we're just lying. I have the physical copies, but I listened to them. Let me get these in order here. And then you, and then you. The Inheritance Cycle by Christopher Paolini. We've got Aragon, and then Eldest, and then Brisinger, which I actually learned how to say finally. And Inheritance. I did not read Murtag. I thought it was pronounced Murtaw because I thought there was an extra letter in there, but no, it's Murtag. Or at least that's how they pronounce it in the audiobook. So he could have been fucking lying to me too. First time reading the series and I was pleasantly surprised. I actually, I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I feel like if I had read this as a teenager, when Aragon came out, when, when did it come out? That's, that's the real question. 2002. I was nine. What? I thought I, I thought I was a teenager. If I had read this when it came out, this would have been my entire fucking personality. Like, no doubt about it. I would have been insufferable, honestly. But I really, I really liked it. Um, following Aragon, a poor farm boy, as he discovers a dragon egg, and then they're 
their shenanigans, their tomfoolery, and everything that's happening there. Truly though, like I, I, it took me a bit to remember that Aragon is not the name of this dragon. Aragon is the name of the boy. Like I had always thought that it was the name of the dragon, and then while I was reading, I kept getting conf or while I was listening to the audiobook, I kept getting confused at first, and then I was like, right. Aragon is the child. But yeah, overall, pretty solid. Um, I read To Sleep in a Sea of Stars by Christopher Paolini over the summer. And I really liked that one, which is surprising because I don't really like sci-fi that much. So I was excited to try what he's really super known for. And I, I'm definitely going to reread this again. And I'll probably, here we are again, fucking lying. I'll probably listen to Murtag in December this month that we are in now, but in my TBR, did I mention that at all? No, because I wasn't planning on it, but I've decided right now that I'm, I'm probably gonna do that. I really liked it. I did like, the, there's something sticky on the books here and I don't know what it is and I keep feeling it on my fingers and it's driving me fucking nuts. Oh my God. I have had a day so far. And this is just, this is, this might be the straw that breaks the camel's back. This might be the thing that tipped me over the edge into absolute madness. I have been up since about 4.30 and it's 11.30 now. I got maybe a 20 minute schnooze around six when all the kids fell back asleep because why did all of my kids wake up between 4.30 and 5.30 just to dick around and get snacks? I couldn't fucking tell you. On a Monday? Is it Monday? It's Monday, yeah. On a Monday? No, thank you. And then I had to bring the kids to school. I get the kids out, the, the little boys out to the car to bring them into daycare. And right before I get my middle son into the car seat, mommy, pee coming. Then I get him back in the house, get all the winter stuff off, get him on the body, and he's so tired, he's like, no, no, I don't want to do it. You wipe. What the fuck? And it's a fiasco. And then we had a fiasco with, the, with him not being allowed to bring his car into his classroom because he left it there over the weekend and he lost it. Anyways, I digress. I'm just having a fucking day. I'm, I'm having a day. <coughs> and sticky books is the last thing I need. Next up, I have one that I have thoughts about, but it's entirely my fault. Like, this is on me 100%. The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. I've got a tickle now, too. I'm fucking done. I'm done. I'm... This, by all rights, should have been my absolute favorite book of the month. It's got gods and it's got weird shit happening. It's got gods coming back. Just everything about it should have been fantastic. However, I was listening to the audiobook and when I started listening, I was really distracted. And then as I went through, I kept getting lost and I kept like not knowing what the fuck was going on. And I kept having to go back and reread it and I re-listen to it. And by the end, I was just like, what, should, what the fuck happened? Like, I thought I had the threads of what was going on. And at the end, I was just so lost. And that's entirely my fault. It has nothing to do with the book itself. So I am reserving judgment on this. And I'm pretty sure this happened when I listened to Malice way back when. But like, again, not the book's fault. It was just not the right time for me to be listening because I was just had so much going on. 100% gonna reserve judgment on this because I, I know I'm gonna love it. I am gonna try reading the physical one. Again, like I said, I'm gonna go through the physical books I have here. Did I actually sit down and read any of these bitches? No, I listened to the fucking audiobooks. Uh, I like this dragon though on the back. I'm a big fan of, of covers that do that. I'm gonna try this again in the new year. I might sit down and read it. I should sit down and read it, but I'll probably listen to the audiobook again. But Malice, like the, the Faithful and the Fall in that series by him, mm, obsessed. It was so good, like top tier. So I was going into this with such high expectations, but I let myself down. And then finally, again, I didn't actually read this book. I listened to the audiobook. This was here and it's mm, actually probably for the best. This one is Ruination by Anthony Reynolds, a League of Legends story. I don't know anything about League of Legends. My brother is super, super into it. And he was really excited about the storyline. And when Orbit was like, hey, do you want a copy? I was like, sure, let me try and get into this because typically, and John, if you're watching this, no, you didn't hear what you're about to hear. Typically, 
recommendations, like with movies or shows or whatever, or books even, um, from my brother are good. So if he was excited about it, and because he said the storyline itself from the game was really good, so I, I trusted that. And it was good. It was predictable. Like, I, th- I th- for me, it was super, super predictable, but it wasn't like in a bad way. It didn't take away from my enjoyment at all, but I was 100% sure of what was going to happen. I'm going to put a little spoiler thing here. Um, also, spoilers for Rogue One, the Star Wars movie. Um, apologies if you put those two together, but spoilers abound, so just skip on ahead to the, the end of this. I had hints of what was going to happen, but about like halfway through, I was st- I stopped in my kitchen and I just looked off to the, the side to the camera like I was on the fucking office or something. And I was like, this is going to be a Rogue One situation, isn't it? Everyone's going to fucking die. And naturally, I was right. Uh, almost everybody died at the end, except like a couple that made it out and then tried to, to save everybody from the horrible shit that was still going on. But yeah, everybody died. All the characters and like, I knew it was coming. And as soon as the, like, the final battle part, whatever, it was happening, like, I knew. There was no, no way that Callista was going to survive. Because she literally said, I'm going to go sacrifice myself. And I don't, it, it wasn't going to happen. Viego, like, that bitch was going to die anyways. From the very beginning, faded. I knew that Isolde, his wife, was going to die while Callista was out. Because there's no way she was also saying like i'm dying like everything was laid out the breadcrumbs were like boulders they weren't even fucking breadcrumbs they was it was very very obvious okay spoilers done but overall very enjoyable predictable but didn't take away from it but i am happy that i didn't read the physical copy and i listened to the audiobook because this one it's got so much beautiful white space however the white is too white this is printer paper this is book paper this is printer paper. Okay? No. Blinding my eyeballs. Literally. Blinded by the light. So yeah. I don't know if Anthony Reynolds has written anything else. I haven't seen that name anywhere. But um, definitely an author that I would try again after this. Like with some original work. Because it was fantastic. Oh, I gotta wrap this up soon. My mother-in-law is going to be bringing the, the little boys home from daycare. Okay, so those were the ones that I have the physical copies. Let me pull up a story graph. I read a lot of holiday ebooks. These are just going to be going from most recent to oldest because that's the order they are here on story graph. Uh, Christmas in Coconut Creek by Carissa Kinward. Stop it. It was so fucking cute. I loved it. It was very spicy. It was very, very spicy. Top tier spice. It was so good. Like the banter, just the, oh my god, everything about it was amazing. I I loved it. Girl goes to um, Coconut Creek, Florida, from Colorado for the three week holiday break that she's got because she's just she needs a break from her normal life and she needs to she needs a change. And she meets a guy on the. Um, on the plane she swiped right on him on the dating app right before she got on the plane and then he sits down next to her on the plane and then they get to talking whoops that's the best friend who she's going to see uh her boyfriend's best friend so they are together and it's glorious i loved it so much then i had listened to 12 days of christmas by debbie mccomber mccomber is that a silent B? I don't, I don't actually fucking know right now. It's a cozy holiday story with like a dash of romance. Um, this woman, her neighbor is kind of a Scrooge and she's gonna try to conduct an experiment to kill him with kindness. Every day for 12 days leading up to Christmas, she's gonna do one nice thing and she was documenting it on a blog that she was writing. And it was cute. Very, uh, very reminiscent of a Hallmark Christmas movie or like a Netflix Christmas movie. I definitely would watch that movie. Then I had listened to Three Holidays and a Wedding by Uzma Jalaluddin, I think is how you pronounce that. Um, if not, I will roast myself while I'm editing. And Marissa Stapley, this one, again, it was a, it was a holiday story, um, not like super romance heavy. It follows like these two women, they get stranded in this small Canadian town, um, not far from Ottawa, I believe it was. And like, they're trying to get to Toronto for the holidays for their own reasons. And flights and storms and whatnot leave them stranded in this this small town. It was a really cute story. It was like a, a multi-faith 
holiday story um, set in the early 2000s when Christmas Hanukkah... Ha, ha, I just mixed up Hanukkah and Ramadan. I, Christmas, Hanukkah, and Ramadan all fell at the same time. And these two women and their families, they are stuck in this small town. And there is a holiday movie being filmed there. And just like the shenanigans that ensue. It was it was definitely cute. I really liked it. And then I had a bunch of ebooks. So it was like a... Um, a series called Under the Mistletoe. Uh, Under the Mistletoe? Wow. The five short stories that were from different authors. So there was Only Santa's in the Building by Alexis Daria. That one was Neighbors Meet at a Holiday Party and Get Frisky, basically. Um, there's definitely more to it than that, but that's that's what I remember right now. Uh, Merriman and Mayhem by Alexandria Belfleur, which was... I don't actually remember what that one's about. Oh, a woman keeps running into a firefighter because she keeps having holiday disaster ho- because she keeps having holiday disasters. But that one, super cute. All by my, all by my elf by Olivia Dade. The couple in this one are professors or something at a university, and like in the during the holiday season when they're not getting paid, they are driving around like a I think it was like a repurposed Oscar Mayer wiener truck or something, and uh, they get frisky in the truck. Do we need to know more? And then there was Mary Ever After by Tessa Bailey. Uh, again, I don't know. I read all of these in like one day, back to back, because they're like 50 to 80 pages long, right? Uh, a single mom starting over in a new town with a newborn, and she runs into this guy at the thrift store that she works at. He is just a hunk of a human being. And then relationship ensues. That one, that one I think was my least favorite just because the single mother in question made some choices as a parent that I absolutely would not have made and for the safety of my children would would not have made, but I mean, you do you. The last one in that series, which is actually number one because I'm going backwards here, is Cruel Winter With You by Allie Hazelwood. This one is Best Friend's Brother, who was the one that got away. Um, they get trapped in the house during a snowstorm and things ensue. Then I listened to... Mistletoe and Mr. Wright by Sarah Morgenthaler, which is actually the second book in a series, which I usually hate doing, even if it's like interconnected standalones. Like I, I hate doing that. But the first one was not actually a, a holiday book and I didn't want to read something that wasn't a holiday book, but it's the second book in the Moose Springs, Alaska series. This one follows a rich socialite who comes into this small town because she loves it so much and like her family basically owns the town and she's trying to do all of these things and the townspeople hate her because she is the rich person coming in trying to disrupt their way of life and one of the townspeople who has the hots for her. Very, very much a hallmark Christmas type. Um, not spicy. It was cute, and I definitely want to try the other books in the series, um, but it was, it was cute. Nothing, nothing super special about it. And then, uh, I think finally here, yeah, I have the first two books in the system by Madison Fox, a fellow booktuber, Good Game and Forbidden Game, um, where they are masked. I just heard one of my kids, but all of them are at school or daycare, so I'm just, I'm tripping the fuck out right now. The system are three guys who are masked video game streamers, and... Each book in the the series are like interconnected standalones. Um, follows one of the guys and his lady love. These are definitely some of my favorites from the month. They were so good. I was blown away. And the spice was top tier. I'm about to start um, Fake Game, the third one, probably later tonight after everyone goes to bed. The first one, she's got a cheating ex-boyfriend and she just wants to, to move on and maybe hook up with one of these mass video game streamers. Okay, that's it. Um, I need to wrap this up immediately because the kids are going to be home very, very soon. Um, so let me know down below in the comments what you read in the month of November if you hit whatever goal you set for yourself or if you didn't even set a goal because you have uh, a level of, of sense that I do not possess. So, or if that's just too much or you don't have a lot of time, drop some hearts down below, preferably purple ones or pink because the star and also those are two of my favorite colors. As always, to stay updated with my current reads and how I'm feeling about them, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, TikTok, Storygraph and Threads, all at Zoe's All Booked, which I will leave linked down below in the description box. Thank you all so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and share the video. 
so everyone else can join in on the madness, the chaos, the shit show. With that, we have come to the very end of the video. I hope you all have a wonderful day and get at least a little bit of uninterrupted reading time. I love you awesome nerds and I will see you in the next one for Couchmas Day 5, which is a gift guide for readers. So if you have some, a loved one who's a reader in your life that you don't know what to get them, or uh, if you want to send that video to someone, do it. This is for you. I'm very excited. Okay, love you. Bye.